the stereo system. In the last Jag, you got a gramophone with a dog sitting on it, but in this, I've got 1,200 watts, and it will play anything, anything. Uh, you just, you push, you push that. Um, um. By the time I realised I didn't understand iPod connectivity, the sun was over Thailand. And I was facing a decision made by thousands of holidaymakers every summer. M5 and M4, or A303, past Stonehenge. The motorway is 20 miles further, but probably better for fuel consumption. But the A303 is more fun in a car like this. Yeah, A303 it is! This was a good call. There's a whiff of NASCAR about this car. And now, I'm gonna give it a bit more because I'm gonna engage dynamic mode. Look, the dials glow red. What this does is firms everything up, gives you more punch. Also, because the XJ is made entirely from aluminium, it's much lighter than any other big car. It feels like a sports car. On good roads like these, it's not far short of a masterpiece. <laughs> the Jag set about chewing up the miles. By 1.45, I figured I was in the lead, but I'd reached the M3, which was boring. So, I decided to let the car drive itself. Right, cruise control on. Very good system, this. Set the speed at 70, and the road ahead is scanned by microwaves. I'm going to uh, hook on now to the back of our camera car. There we go. So now, if he speeds up, I speed up. If he slows down, I slow down. I don't have to do anything and I can even choose what sort of distance I want to follow it at. There's the uh, safe distance there. Right down to the full Audi. Yes, there we are, that's the Audi following distance. It was now late, the motorway was monotonous, and my thoughts turned to the business of staying sharp. Production team, as usual, has provided me with a CD to keep me awake on this long and difficult and perilous voyage. But it was while working at Radio Lancashire that I experienced a revelation. I took over as producer and presenter of the weekend mid-morning shows. I reported on roadblocks, carol concerts, mm. jumble sales. Hammond's adventures in local radio weren't helping. Record-breaking attempts and sponsored swims. But soon, something else did. <gasps> Fuel warning light is on! And I'm only on the M25! No! A splash and dash pit stop cost precious moments. Here we go. And then Beelzebub decided to cost me even more. No, no, no. This is exactly the sort of hold-up I can do without. Is anyone going to be working on them? I mean, really? So you have to drive along at 50 miles an hour, glaring at your speedometer, not looking at the road ahead. That's very dangerous. I mean, it raises money for the government, obviously, but it's very dangerous. Oh. By the time the roadworks finished, God was back in the lead. He was now just over an hour from Lowestoft. OK, 65 miles to go, and I would say that the inky blackness of night has become sort of royal blue. I suppose the sun will be early with it. Can it do that? Ooh. 
There is a smudge in the sky, a big one. The mother of fire, it seems, is coming back. That is daylight. I have 39 minutes. There were still 34 miles to go, but win or lose, I was glad I'd done this race in the Jag. An S-Class may be a comparable limo to this, but an S-Class doesn't go and stop and steer anything like as well as this. If you're a keen driver, this is the only big car you can have. The sun was now over Amsterdam and would appear in Suffolk in just 12 minutes. Come on, come on. 4.9 miles. Right, where am I going? Where is England's most easterly spot? 